All right, I think I'm, I think I'm live, but I need to check some things. Hi, folks. Uh, this is Chris. Um, I'm trying to live stream here. It's a completely new setup, so give me just a, a minute or so to get set so that I can see the chat room, make sure that I've got all the tools I need in front of me. Um, and I do apologize, but it's the middle of summer, it's super hot, and I do have an air conditioner going. It's the only way I can get work done. Uh, I hope it's not drowning out my audio, but, you know, it's that or nothing. So hopefully you can all hear me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to open up chat on a different computer right now. Give me a sec. Let's see. Am I live streaming like I think I am? Hope so. Um, I cannot tell you. It looks like I am streaming. Okay, because I'm seeing some folks here in the in the in the room already. Uh. Let's see if I'm right. Got Nathan Cudgel, No Hurt Feline, Christopher Johnson, Nintendo, Salvaged, and Asian Sketcher. That's who I'm seeing right now. So hopefully the stream health is good. Um, yeah, I'm going to try to um, ink this uh, all might. I had done a live stream like probably over a month ago or something. I forget the last time I tried to do one. And... Um, it wasn't really, it wasn't broadcasting right. It, it, it just, I've had a lot of technical problems. Uh, the computer failed. So I'm actually borrowing my fiance's laptop to stream. I've got my computer over here to look at the chat and we'll just hope that this, uh, this works. Let me see if I can, I'm gonna try to move the chat computer more over here. Yeah, I'm seeing fake Eoy, uh, unique flower bot. Time to, time to tip the reins. Okay, so yeah, it looks like it's working. Well, folks, I hope you can hear me. As I said right at the beginning, um, I do have an air conditioner going. It's the only way I can survive. I don't have central air in this place, so we have um, the floor units. And uh, <laughs> it's, it's still pretty hot. Uh, I've got my water. And let's just hope for the best and see how this, uh, this works. It's amazing how good cold water can sort of taste when you're really, really hot. It's like sometimes I find water the most boring thing possible. I don't love having it, but then there's like a really hot day, and you're just so grateful for it. Uh, what's the weather like where all of you are from? Um, Hopefully not too bad. If this works, I, uh, I hope to sort of start live streaming at least once a week, maybe slightly more often than that, just so that I have an opportunity to um, both connect with all of you and uh, get some actual drawing done. Um, I, I've sort of slacked off for, for a while because I didn't have a good setup uh, and it's been hot, but um, I love drawing even if I'm not great. Like my goal is just to sort of improve and uh, so yeah, I, I, I like drawing though. It, it's one of the things that gives me the most pleasure. So uh, yeah. 90s for Asian Sketcher. Oh yeah, yeah, that sounds awful. Uh, Nintendo says he's been working on a Mighty Morphin Megazord inking. Well, that sounds fun. That sounds cool. Um, if if I miss your chat, it is nothing personal, by the way. It is purely just because you know I'm I'm pecking away at this drawing and I don't look up every every time. Otherwise, I go too slow and that becomes uh, pretty boring to watch, uh, in my opinion. Uh, so it's a little bit of a balance when you live stream, like figuring out. Uh, how much you want to answer the room and how much you want to keep drawing. Hopefully that makes sense. 
So right now I'm just sort of like inking like hair and big outlines and stuff with um, a Pigma fine ink brush. Uh, it's one of my favorite tools personally. It's not something a lot of pros would use. They tend to use nibs or um, or actual brushes with you know ink. But um, while I've got those tools here, uh, you know I'm still sort of I don't think I'm great with them. I feel way more comfortable with this, so that's what I'm doing. Uh, Terry Turner says that I should remember to use the Force. Yeah. That would be nice to have access to the Force. I would be... I would be a pretty lazy Jedi if I could move things with my mind. I would honestly just sort of sink into my couch and then when I needed a water or dinner or something, I would just use my Jedi mind powers to sort of hover them over to me. Uh, that wouldn't be uh, too heroic. That wouldn't be too selfless. Hi, Miles. Uh, we hit 105 today. Oh, my gosh. 105. Uh, Fakey Yoy says it's balmy in Louisiana. I know how that is. I lived in New Orleans for uh, four years. I... Uh, but I was younger then, and I didn't mind it like I do now. I, I, I kind of, whoops, not a, not a huge fan of uh, the heat anymore. My new job has me working outside uh, quite a bit, but that's okay. At least I'm working. It's, uh, it's been a challenge to keep up with uh, doing the weekly episodes, I've, and the frustrating thing is I've actually really wanted to um, do some bonus episodes. I've had my, uh, I've had some ideas for some things that I wanted to talk about, but I just, I just don't have the time. I wish I could do something like this full time, but, but you know that that's just not realistic. Um, hopefully someday, you know, I could devote more time to it. That would be nice. Who are these characters, asks Asian Sketcher. Uh, this is the same character, actually. Uh, this is a character called All Might in the uh, current manga that's going on called uh, My Hero Academia. And uh, when I have a patron at the, uh, at like a $20 level, one thing that I'll do for them is draw the character of their choice. And so I had a patron uh, request that I draw this character. He's sort of a skinny weirdo, and he can, like, turn his body into this, you know, hugely muscled, insanely powerful superhero. And he's a mentor to the, uh, to the main character. <sighs> what are some schlocky movies that you enjoy? Uh, asks No Hurt Feline. I Come in Peace, Dark Angel is one of my favorites. I remember that. I remember the commercials for that with, like, Dolph Lundgren saying to the alien, the alien goes, uh, I come in peace. And he goes, you go in pieces. And that was actually more of a uh, Sylvester Stallone voice, but that's, that's how the line was delivered in my memory. Um, that's a good schlocky movie that I enjoy. That's a great question. I enjoy schlocky movies for sure. Um... Well, I'm a big fan of uh, horror, and I'll even watch, like, bad horror movies. So, like, all the Friday the 13th movies, quite a few of those are actually quite bad. <laughs> Objectively, they're not good, but I enjoy them. So, that, that, if that counts as schlock, I mean, it's successful schlock, but I think it counts as schlock. Uh, that, that's an example of one. With the way you're going, you'll have 50,000 subs in no time, says Miles. Jeez, that would be wonderful. Like, if I... I'm not positive, be, uh, like, what that would do financially, but I think if I was at 50,000 that I might be able to do that full time. Like, I think that might be enough to pay the bills, but I, I'm not 100% sure because, you know, it's still pretty far away, all things considered. I think, I think I'm somewhere around 11,000. I, um, I make it a point, actually, not to dwell on my statistics too much. 
I, I do check in on um, my analytics here and there just to see if there are any trends like, um, you know, certain things that people are responding to or, or that, but um, I try not to, like, dwell on it because it's just, it doesn't really mean anything to me. Because it's not like I'm making my living off of this or anything. So, yeah. Anyway, hopefully that makes sense. <sighs> this is interesting. Christopher Johnson says, Work has resumed on Miracle Man by Buckingham and Gaiman. Uh, I've always enjoyed Mark Buckingham. Any thoughts on his art? Um, yeah, I like Mark Buckingham. I, I, I don't think I could, like, honestly say that he's been, like, one of my favorites whose career I followed, but he's absolutely worked on a lot of projects that I've enjoyed. Um, I mean, the biggest it would be Fables. I, I really do like that book. I thought that that was really cool and clever, so, um, yeah. It's a challenge to draw um, a manga character and try to be sort of loyal to his overall design, but still sort of draw it in my style instead of like, you know, just faking an anime style. So um, that's a big challenge right now with this character, because he definitely has a few stylistic quirks uh, that wouldn't really be the way I'd illustrate something, not like I'm anything special just saying like I'm trying to be I'm trying to sort of stay honest with how I draw things as well as be honest with the character's interpretation it's a it's kind of a fun challenge um, and I have to admit I've become a big fan of um, my hero academia I think it's I think it's a really cool comic. It reminds me a lot of um, the New Mutants comic in the '80s. That let's see, mostly like when Louise Simonson was working on it with. Um, well, actually, now that I think of it, I guess uh, Chris Claremont and Bill Sienkiewicz were the creators when I started, and then it became Wheezy Simonson and Brett Blevins later on, but I, I, I enjoyed that a lot. I was a lot younger, and it, like, really hit at the right time for me, um, and I get, like, some of the same feeling out of uh, My Hero Academia. You don't have a Patreon link in your video description. You should always put one in there, says Randy's Burgers. No, I guess I don't have one in this, but um, I do usually put it in at the bottom of most videos that I upload. Um, you know, I don't want to be over the top about, like, uh, my Patreon. I'm super grateful for the support that I get, but, um, I consider it more like giving somebody a tip for, like, really good service. You know what I mean? I, d I don't want to, like, act like I'm expecting something like that out of people. Uh, anyway, hopefully that makes sense. And if, uh, if it doesn't take too long to draw this, then I'll uh, probably color it with some uh, Prismacolor markers, too. I was um, thinking of doing sort of a different way of uh, approaching that lately, because uh, I saw this artist, uh, Brian Shearer. Uh, he just did the value tones on his piece with various colors of gray, and then he put the uh, colors over it, and I thought it looked really great, and I'd like to give that a shot. I've never tried to do it that way. I've just used the actual color with no, um, with no base underneath. So, we'll see. What do you think about the news coming from Comic-Con San Diego? Um, 
I'm trying to think if there's anything that really stands out. I don't think that Marvel um, really like wowed me with any of their news uh, this time. Um, DC definitely seemed to, to do a little better there. I'm trying to think if there's any real news though, on, on, like from any publishers that caught my eye. I still need. I, I don't know that I really uh, can think of anything too huge that, that like excited me personally. Um, I, I liked some of the trailers that I saw. Um, I, I hope the next Godzilla movie, the American Godzilla movie, I should clarify. I hope that that's good. I thought it looked kind of interesting. Um, I thought I thought that the Aquaman and Shazam movies actually both looked kind of fun. Uh, so that would be nice if DC finally sort of gave me a, a superhero movie that, that I got excited about and had a blast at. Um, I'm open to it. I, I haven't really loved what they've done so far, but, but that's, you know, beauty's in the eye of the beholder, right? Like, I, I, I'm, I'm not mad if it, somebody else really loved Batman v Superman, but it, it really wasn't for me. I, and Justice League, or no, you know what the worst one was probably, Suicide Squad. I felt like that one, that one tricked me. <laughs> okay, that's that's a, I've got a, a good base for for the sort of non superhero All Might here. Time to uh, time to start fleshing out his actual superhero version. Uh, what about any of you, though? Did you hear any news out of San Diego Comic-Con that um, excited you? Hey, Skip and Tosh. Hello, Foof. <laughs> Foof says that uh, Shazam looks fun, but those shoulder pads. <laughs> I get what you're saying. Uh, but you know what? Like, It's worth keeping in mind that this is like a kid's idea of what a superhero should be. At least to some degree. So, uh... I excuse a lot of Shazam's look by just thinking, well, that's what Billy Batson thinks a superhero should look like. The AC is somewhat soothing like you're on the Enterprise. Oh my gosh, that's great. Hello, TARDIS Rider. Yeah, I like the... Uh, TARDIS Rider mentions Doctor Who, and I, I did like the, the little trailer we finally got for uh, Jodie Whittaker's version of the Doctor. I, I'm a big Doctor Who fan, so um, I'm looking forward to that returning. And with a whole new creative team and a new cast, it's always kind of exciting as a Doctor Who fan because it's just like, it's just a new take on everything. It's always fun to see it through new eyes. There's not too many shows like Doctor Who, but like, it, it, in a lot of ways, it's like a comic book. You know, it gets a new creative team, and and they have their own take on the material. I, I like that. DC Black Label. You know what? I mean, I heard mention of DC Black Label, but personally, um, I didn't read up on it. So I, uh, that's a piece of news that I, I, I need to familiarize myself with. I, I didn't catch what that was about. I've, uh, I don't uh, have a regular work schedule anymore in terms of like, you know, you work these five days and you get these two days off. It's more like a work four days, get two days off, work four days, get two days off. So, But mostly I do work on the weekend no matter what. So a lot of the San Diego Comic-Con news um, I haven't had a chance to catch up on. Today is basically my version of Saturday. That's why I'm doing this. I said I'm going to set some time aside and uh, do some art. 
No recurring enemies this season, says Christopher Johnson. Um, is, is that something they announced? Hmm. I didn't hear about that. Someone told me that she makes other shows more enjoyable by pretending they are Doctor Who and the Doctor hasn't arrived yet. <laughs> I like that, Randy. That's a, that's a very positive way of looking at things. Sorry, I guess I just realized that, uh, I hope I haven't been doing it too much during the episode. I've been humming song in my head most of today. Some song from the 80s has popped into my head and it won't get out. Some of the statues were beautiful at San Diego Comic-Con, but pricey. Yeah, yeah. I need some soft background music. Um, I'd be happy to do that if there's some uh, sort of like, you know, non, uh, non-licensed sort of music that you're allowed to play that people enjoy all right. Um, I've never really looked into it, I have to admit. The uh, weirdest thing about All Might is definitely, like, these sort of long locks of hair. Like, when he's in his sort of skinny persona, they just sort of flop, like, down here. And then when he's a superhero, they almost stick up like bunny rabbit ears. And I really can't think, for the life of me, of a way to make that look natural. Uh, I'm just going to lean into it, go for it, have the hair sticking up, and, and just hope for the best. But, uh... I'm definitely a little nervous that it won't look convincing. We'll we'll see. Uh, no, Asian Sketcher. The song in my head isn't Careless Whisper, although now it is. No, um, it's by Howard Jones, who was not exactly a one-hit wonder, but he also, of course, wasn't like a, a megastar. And he had this song called Things Will Only Get Better, uh, which probably most people aren't going to remember, especially, obviously, a lot of my audience there doesn't even listen to, like, 80s synth pop or, or new wave, but um, it has a memorable chorus. It just goes like, whoa, 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 whoa. So if you've heard it, you know what I'm talking about. Otherwise, I just sounded like a crazy person, which is fine. Sometimes, sometimes that's the way I sound. Let's follow the musculature with the suit design. Dude, I'm trying to be confident with my line work and just do it work a little faster um, because I'm sort of realizing it's like I always want it to be perfect and it never exactly is perfect because I'm not there yet, but uh, you have to just sort of push forward and... Uh, and, and do it anyway, because it's going to be your work no matter what. So if it's not going to be perfect, you might as well just, like, not waste too much time thinking about it. Just just do the work the way you do it. Note the mistakes. Try to avoid them the next time. That's my goal, anyway. That's my thinking. Hope that makes sense. I feel like I should be telling stories or something. Um, so my new job, I'm... I'm literally a used car salesman right now, guys. I don't know if it'll be my forever job. That that's not my background. I, you know, I I got a degree in college and a, and and I've sort of always been a, more of a businessman. But I had to get something to pay the bills, and I'm literally slinging used cars. Um, it's 
it is interesting. I, I'll say that. And the people that I work with are all super friendly. That's the best part, is that everybody I'm working with is pretty nice. I, I, I have zero complaints about, like, the staff. Um, and, I, and I think that the quality of what we're selling is good. So that's good to sort of be able to believe in, you know, what you're doing. It's just totally different work than I ever expected. Um, so we also buy cars and uh, I'm not going to go into like too many specifics but a very popular YouTuber came in and, and sold his car and I was the one up and I you know was I dealt with the appraisal and the presentation and everything and I and I bought his car uh, so that was kind of interesting uh, I didn't reveal that I knew who he was because I, I didn't want him to feel uncomfortable. Um, he was treated like you know any customer, but but I knew who he was. Uh, it's not somebody I follow, but uh, if you've ever heard of Onision, I think I'm saying that right. Uh, that's who came in, and uh, I examined and, and tendered an offer, and I bought his car for the company. Uh, so that was kind of interesting to just sort of see somebody like that look very different than I sort of um, would have expected him to look like from the, the bits I've seen in like news and stuff. But uh, it was it was still clearly him. He was polite. He was nice. I don't know a whole lot about him. Uh, I don't follow his channel, but I did. I know enough about YouTube that I knew who it was. So anyway. Uh, yeah, I mean, I won't, like, use any uh, customer's, like, real names. I'm just using his YouTube name there, and uh, I wouldn't, like, say anything personal about any customers that came in. They're entitled to their privacy, but uh, just in broad generalities, I definitely see some interesting characters uh, filter through and, you know, people that aren't uh, shy about sharing their political views with me or something, and I just sort of have to go like oh interesting anyway about the car uh you know like because i just don't want to engage in something like that and i've had a guy that came in that i swear like must have just done a, a bump of cocaine because he was so animated i don't know that for a fact i'm just saying that's the energy level he was at it, it, we definitely get some characters uh which is fun keeps it keeps the day interesting keeps keeps things going quick so for now, that's what I'm doing. I'm slinging cars. Slinging cars. Uh, Milos says that Onision got kicked out of special forces for bad-mouthing the military. See, I don't know enough about him. I've never heard anything like that. That, If that's if that's so, that's totally news to me. I, I, I thought of him only as a YouTuber. Uh, anyway. And I was like, oh, right. We have YouTubers around here. I, I have nothing bad to say about the guy based purely on my interaction with him. Uh, beyond that, I'm not overly familiar with his work, so really couldn't speak to it. Or who he is as a person. I don't know. I don't know. So, um, what have you guys uh, read for comics lately that are good, or seen a, seen any good movies or anything like that lately? Um, I'm trying to think of like the last really good one that I saw. I, you know, I might go out tonight and see. Um, sorry to bother you. I've heard really good things about that one, but uh, I haven't seen it yet. Looks like I'm getting a bunch of chat. Uh, ba 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 ba. 
oh yeah, Young Justice is coming back, uh, Clone Wars is coming back, people are talking about uh, all that kind of stuff with uh, San Diego Comic Con. Boy, you know, I still cannot get used to shows coming back. Like, and, and there's a lot of them at this point that have come back and been resurrected, like, after they've been canceled. But that just was not a thing at all when I was growing up, you know? The, the closest you could get, and it really isn't that close, but, like, um, maybe a TV movie as, like, a special event on, like, one of the... Um, one of the major networks. That's the closest. So yeah, that is weird to see like that there are shows that just like come back after they've been canceled and been off the air. I cannot get used to it. I, and trust me, I've enjoyed some of it. Like the first one I remember was maybe like, what was it? Like I guess, was it Family Guy or Futurama? It was one of those two like that felt like they were the first ones to really come back. Uh, I enjoyed the um, the Twin Peaks return quite a bit. I enjoyed uh, most of Arrested Development coming back. So, um, you know, I'm not going to say that I don't enjoy it, but it, it's still, like, just weird to me that, like, shows that are canceled come back. Upgrade looked like a fun action... Oh, uh, that's from Heavy Systems. Yes, Upgrade was one of my favorite movies so far this year. That was a blast. That, that movie was great. Kiro says he's currently reading Thor, Avengers, Justice League, TMNT, Ant-Man, and the Wasp. Not bad. That's a lot. Um, I'm only reading, like, intermittently with, like, most of the current stuff that's coming out. I'm reading some of Larry Hama's G.I. Joe at IDW. I finally started picking up that because I loved that comic when I was a kid and uh, I'm really enjoying it. Um, I, I read some of Tom King's Batman, but I, uh, I, I'm i never like up to date. I'm always sort of behind, but I did read like issue 50. So um, I saw what went down in that. Uh, it was pretty cool. I read... Sean Gordon Murphy's um, Batman White Knight. Um, but that's about it. Like, I, I'm pretty behind on most modern stuff. Uh, so, for me, it's like... I don't know. Hopefully I catch up at some point, because... I do like reading the various characters and just sort of seeing what direction Marvel and DC tend to go. Um, but, uh... And even, like, to a degree, stuff like Archie and that, like, I'm, I'm always just sort of curious where it ends up, but, uh, I'm not very up-to-date right now, overall. Uh, I can't believe Joss Whedon is bringing back Buffy, but not goddamn Firefly. My second favorite TV show ever, and Twin Peaks is my favorite. Well, I can believe it, because it's based on ratings. And also, like, Buffy is a reboot, so... I think the time is about right for something like that. I think that there's some potential there. Um, and I think that while Joss is a, an executive producer, I'm pretty sure he won't be the showrunner. He's working on too many other things, so... It'll be a, it'll probably be a pretty different I interpretation in a lot of ways, and that's okay. I, lo I was a big fan of Buffy. Um, that was one of my favorite shows. I'm gonna draw in some of the musculature here, but I, um, I'm forgetting exactly what his costume looks like for some of the details, so I'm gonna have to like look at some reference and color it later. My favorite Joss Whedon flick was Cabin in the Woods. Oh, that's a great movie. I don't necessarily consider it completely a Joss Whedon flick since he was only like, you know, producer on it, but uh, I love that movie. That's great. Wasn't that Drew Goddard that did that one? I hope my memory's right on that. Um, yeah.
I still think the first Avengers holds up very well that Joss did. So, let's see. I've got some episodes coming up for the show. Uh, I'll just sort of let you know what the next one's going to be. Uh, I'm doing Mar Marv Wolfman. Uh, if you're not familiar with him, he's written since the 60s, still writing today. Um, and he's he wrote a lot of important stuff for both Marvel and DC. And uh, one of the most prominent would be uh, Crisis on Infinite Earths. But he's written a lot of other important stuff and had uh, some important movements uh, in terms of lawsuits and creators rights uh, over the years so I think it'll actually be a pretty interesting episode like you know th there's some good comics history uh, for this episode um, I'm, I'm sort of getting the sense that that's what people enjoy the most is sort of uh, a, a deep dive into the history as well as sort of understanding a creator's techniques so that's the direction I'm leaning to uh, to a degree is, is to like try to try to do a little bit more of that um, but they also take a little more time to do research so I don't always have uh, I can't always do one a week right now on something like that hopefully that makes sense uh, so sometimes I have to do something where I'm more just looking at like maybe one issue in particular and sort of analyzing the creator through that lens of looking at that comic for their for their style and then like talking about their history and their contributions but mostly just looking at one issue um, or finding like you know like a really bonkers issue to like promote something um, there, there's some promotional comics that I've been looking for for quite a while there's uh, there was one of, uh, made last year at the New York Comic Con for um, what was it? It was Avengers teaming up with um, a military uh, contractor, and I can't remember the name of the contractor right now off the top of my head, but it, their team was called NGEN, or Ingen, and uh, so I'm trying hard to find that full comic so that I can review that, and then um, in 1951, Coca-Cola made a comic about the history of drinking from like cavemen drinking water up through the very important invention of uh, soda water to uh, 1951 so yeah those are some comics that I've been searching for for a long time have not found them yet uh, but I would love to review them if I could get my hands on them engine Avengers and coca-cola's the history of refreshment. Personally, I really enjoy finding weird comics like that and, and sort of understanding like why they were made and what impact, if any, they had, or at least what the publisher or creator was trying to accomplish. Uh, that's a lot of fun for me to uh, dig into. Listen to a song called Join Me by Lax and Dion Timber. Oh, okay. Uh, Randy's Burger says, Hey, Chris, have you ever heard of a comic called Boris the Bear? Absolutely. I used to read that one back in the day. That was by Dark Horse Comics. Started off uh, parodying stuff like um, Transformers and uh, some other sort of popular comics of the time. Uh, it's a black and white comic, and then it sort of morphed into a color comic that was more about the original characters in it but yeah I used to read that back in the day um, I did I got into comics around um, 
I don't know, somewhere around 1985, and I read a lot of, um, I got into a lot of the black and white indie comics of the time. Uh, definitely Ninja Turtles was the big one. Also, The Tick by Ben Edlund was a big one for me. Um, so those were some of the books that I really enjoyed. But yeah, Boris the Bear, uh, I read some Cerebus. I liked Usagi Ojimbo at the time. Um, so those are examples of um, comics that I was reading uh, at that point in time that I really enjoyed. Just going to clean this up a little so that I uh, can sort of see everything just a little better. Maybe you can too. See where I put lines down, where where I didn't. Uh, bu -bu -bu. Fakey Oy says, I got into comics in 1974 till about 1988. Wow. It's a, it's a strong run. Yeah, I've, uh, I've read pretty consistently since about, like, 85. I've, like, maybe even earlier now that I'm thinking of it. But somewhere around 1985, I've consistently been reading comics. But I do go through a period now and then where I don't read, like, everything on the stands. I'm definitely at that point now. Um, I just sort of wait to hear what gets good recommendations and maybe pick it up in trade paperback or digital format. Um, I don't really feel the need to keep up with everything monthly anymore. Um, so, yeah. I keep up with uh, the stuff that Rick Remender does. I, I, he's one of my favorite creators. Um, so, yeah, I think he's good. I, rec I always recommend his work to people. Let's see, Jamie Ramirez Art says, I'm going to be uploading a Ryan Sook and Arthur Adams video in the next couple of days. Wow, that sounds pretty cool. Those are both uh, very talented artists. Ryan Sook is very underrated. And you know what? I'm, I'm not sure if I remember this correctly, but I think I do. Um, we were talking about Buffy earlier, and um, after the Buffy live-action series ended, Joss Whedon briefly tried to do a animated version of Buffy. There's like a five minute like test reel out there and I'm pretty sure that Ryan Sook worked on the character design for the animated series. So uh, there's just a little tidbit. I, I, I hope I'm remembering the creator right. There's a chance I'm not, but I'm pretty sure it was Ryan <laughs> Sook. Uh, it looked great. It's a pity that that didn't get picked up because that could have been... It, it had like... Um, Sarah Michelle Gellar wasn't going to uh, join the cast. Uh, but everybody else from the show was. Uh, so that was cool. Uh, Emmanuel Cabrera says, Did you ever read the Batman animated series comics? Batman Adventures. Uh, some of it, yeah. Um, who was the original artist on there that, that like, um, I feel like he passed away uh, only a couple years into its creation? Um... It's not coming to me now, because cause that's like um, coming up on like 20 years old now. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, I'm not thinking of it, but but I did love his artwork especially. Um, the artist that I'm unfortunately not able to, to remember right now off the top of my head, that, that feels wrong. Yeah, it's too bad that I'm not thinking of the artist that I'm... Whatever. Uh, yeah, I've sw No, not Bruce Tim, Mr. Who. Um, th this is an artist that didn't work on the um, animated series. He worked on the comic, and he passed away. And It's not coming to me. Oh, well. Maybe, uh, maybe that would be an interesting episode at some point. To talk about sort of... Batman Adventures or other uh, sort of um, adaptations that like did begin as comic books.
it's not quite the same as a licensed comic because it, the publisher can still do like different adaptations. Oh my goodness! Thank Shankar Katragata. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Thank you so much for the super chat. Uh, and he says, "Listen to this. Join me by LAXX and Dion Timmer on stream." Maybe we should. I appreciate the uh, I appreciate the super chat. Thank you so much. Wow, Darwin Cook? No, not Darwin Cook, Kiro. Although I greatly admire and I greatly miss Darwin Cook. Uh, I was lucky enough to meet him once. Uh, he came to Washington D.C. to um, speak at the Smithsonian about his work and uh, sort of adapting. Um, you know the the crime comics that he does based on uh, Parker's work, and uh, it was a humongous snowstorm. So the turnout was only okay. It was really a massive, scary snowstorm. But I did brave it because I was a big fan of Darwin Cook, and uh, because there weren't too many of us, he was really gracious with his time and uh, spoke to a lot of us like basically one on one. Uh, afterwards, just sort of hung out in the lobby, and uh, it was a really, it was a really memorable occasion um, to to get to understand his approach to work, and uh, just get to understand who he was as a person. And he seemed, he seemed great. I really miss Darwin Cook. Nope, not thinking of Mike Waringo either. Big fan of Mike Waringo, but um, no. I'm, see here, just so that like we uh, can get somewhere. Let me see. I just realized I never um, tweeted or promoted that I was live streaming. Whoops. All right, so uh, Batman Adventures artist. Just Googling it on my phone, see what I find. Is it Mike Parabek? Yeah, that's who I'm thinking of, I think. Mike Par. I'm going to look him up and see if that's who I'm I was thinking of. Mike Parabek. Mike Parabek. Yeah, yeah, that is who I'm thinking of. He was a really talented artist. Uh, passed away back in '96. Um, anyway, he just had a nice, clean art style that really worked well for um, Batman Adventures. Haven't thought of him in a little while. Uh, Atomicus Video says I miss Steve Ditko. Yeah, I miss what he created. He was a, he, he was definitely like you know a, a a very unique character. After researching him, folks, I'll be honest. I think that like yes, he lived by his objectivist values, uh, you know his his, his worldview. I think that there was sincerely a chance that he was somewhere on the spectrum. I think that there's a good chance that he could have been sort of autistic because he did not seem to have many close relationships with other people and he didn't seem to crave it you know he seemed to function just fine without that and it just makes me wonder you know I mean obviously I'm not a trained psychologist and I never met him or, or anything like that it's just uh, something I, I really started to wonder about once I um, really started digging deep into his history and realizing that most of the people you know, he worked with, he, he didn't really necessarily form like a friendship or a lasting relationship with. They were just people he worked with. Um, I don't know. It's just an idea. Uh, have you ever watched Generator Rex? No, I haven't even heard of that one, to be honest. What, what is it? Is it a, an animated show or something, Milos? I, I, I don't know that one. Yeah, I've moved over to Micron pens right now, just uh, an 005, just to sort of get some smaller details in. Um, I've pretty much done what I'm going to do on this drawing. Um, there's obviously a few details that I still need to do, but um, I need to research exactly what his costume looks like uh, before I throw in all of that. Um, but uh, you know what? I'm going to switch back to a brush pen and, and lay down um, a few more blacks before uh, before I call it on this. There's a few more things I'd like to do with it.
Hello, Software Agents TV. And I'm sorry, for, folks, if I missed uh, anything that you put in chat. Like, I'm obviously focusing on the art and trying to work a little faster than I typically do. Uh, even with this air conditioning on, it's still pretty hot, and I, uh, I want to find a way to beat this heat. I'm not sure how yet, but i got to do something or other. Let's see. What are your top favorite genres of music, Chris? Oh, um, fair question. Um, I guess just uh, hard rock, not necessarily metal, although I respect some of it. A lot of my friends are into it, and so I'll listen to it. Just uh, traditional hard rock, like, you know, ACDC. And I like punk stuff. Um, you know, I like the Ramones. They're kind of more kitschy, but I, I really like them. Um, and I just like regular rock, you know, I'm a fan of guys like Foo Fighters, and I know all these bands are starting to sort of sound old. I like Young the Giant, that one's a little more recent. Um, I was a massive fan of the Beastie Boys, I mean, I still am a massive fan of the Beastie Boys. I listen to them still quite a bit, and I also am a big fan of um, the 80s New Wave scene. I like a lot of 80s New Wave, I listen to that a lot. Um, so it's a, you know, relatively eclectic mix of all sorts of different stuff. Um, yeah, I'm always up for discovering something new. Does anyone know anything close to Cromarty High in tone and style? Hmm, I am not the one to ask. Maybe somebody else out there can answer. Heavy Systems question, uh, is there anything close to Cromarty High? What episodes do you have planned for the future? All right, that's a fair question. Uh, immediately, uh, I'm working on one about Marv Wolfman. I mentioned that earlier on the show. Um, I'd have to check my calendar to know for sure what else is coming up, but um, I know Brian Boland and Mike Zek are two artists that are on there. Um, I'm looking at... A, Jonathan Hickman, the writer. Um, um, I've got some kind of funny, weird things, but I, I think I'd like to just sort of let that be a little bit more of a surprise because um, if you let somebody know the joke too far in advance, it's usually not too funny because they've thought, had time to think about it. It's usually better to like plant the seed of like, hey, I'm going to talk about this, blah, 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 and then you hit them with sort of like, you know, the joke, so... Anyway, um, I'm not going to talk too much about the funny stuff. What other creators do I have in the in the near future? Um, it slips my mind right now. Uh, I usually have a calendar planned out about four to five months ahead of time. Uh, and then if something important comes up in the world of comics, I will usually... Uh, swap out some episodes. Like, for instance, when Steve Ditko died, I thought it was kind of important to, um, he was on my list, but he was, like, for, like, five months down the road, and uh, I just said, oh, okay, well, he just passed away. N now's the time to, to talk about Steve Ditko. People are more interested in that. Um, I usually time some stuff to come out kind of near where comic book related movies and TV shows debut, so, uh, I'll definitely be talking about eventually some Aquaman and Captain Marvel stuff, like, uh, when we get into the winter. Uh, I'll probably have, you know what, I'll probably talk about Rick Remender sometime soon, because he's got that adaptation of Deadly Class coming up, and, uh, I would like to talk about Rick Remender. I'm a big fan of his work. Uh, I'd love to explain why, what I like. So, yeah, that, that, that's a rough idea of some of what I've got coming up. Hopefully that, that was interesting to hear. I don't know. Rick Remender is pretty cool. He got his start in animation, I believe, says Jamie Ramirez Art. Uh, exactly correct. Uh, he worked on things like Titan AE, and if I'm remembering correct off the top of my head, uh, Iron Giant. 
he, he did, in fact, get his start in animation, but um, he's always liked comics, and, uh, you know, he did that awesome uh, self-published uh, uh, Blackheart Billy Skater comic. I'd love to sort of mention that to some folks that haven't seen some of his earlier work. Um, and I'll, I'll have to put sort of a disclaimer. Uh, you know, Rick is somebody that I know and I talk to a little bit. Um, so, you know, I'm biased. So I just have to sort of put that disclaimer out there. But I think he's still like an interesting figure to talk about that a lot of people could really get a lot out of. Um, yeah. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm going to throw down some blacks here. A little nervous, but I th I'm going to do it. I'm going to go for it. Just hope I, uh, I hope I'm spotting it in the right place. Or place as. This is why I uh, ink so much on these live streams is uh, I don't really feel like I have consistent techniques and uh, I just want to draw more often so that I can develop those techniques and then you can always sort of twerk them but you have to you have to become consistent you know All right. Um, have you ever done a Barry Windsor Smith video? No, uh, I haven't. And he's definitely someone eventually that I will cover at some point. Uh, not sure exactly when, but he has had an interesting history with his uh, storyteller comics, deciding to take the uh, plunge and hook up with Valiant Comics in their early days. Of course, his work on something like... Um, the Weapon X storyline in uh, uh, Marvel Comics Presents was very well received. I remember reading it at the time and thinking it was something special. Um, he's a really talented guy. Definitely a unique sort of art style, the way he draws faces especially. Um, and I like it. I find it quite beautiful. So someday... Are you going to listen to that song I told you to listen to when I donated? Yeah, man. Um, I, I'm not going to play it here because then, like, won't YouTube, like, uh, ding me? Here, let me, uh, real quick do something. I'm also working off of three different computers, so it's not the easiest. All right, but the guy, sh um... Shankar gave me a super chat and wants me to listen to Join Me by Lax and Dion Timmer. So let's see if I can pull it up and see what the uh, Join Me, huh? I don't want to get this video demonetized. Yeah, this is... This looks official. Like, I feel like if I play this, then YouTube's going to, like, recognize it with their algorithm, and they're going to demonetize this whole video. But here, I'm adding it to my uh, watch later. I'll definitely listen to it and reply. Uh, I'll mention it again. Lax and Dion Timmer. Song is Join Me. So, uh... Looks like it's fairly new, like six months old. Favorite Marvel Strongman? That's a fun question, Fakey. Uh, let me think. What's my favorite Marvel Strongman? Probably The Thing. I think he has the most personality. I also sort of feel like Colossus get, um, is underrated. Like, that he's really strong and that, like, just because the X-Men sort of exist off in their own universe, that, like, you know, we never see Colossus versus Hulk, something like that. Like, I think that would be pretty cool. Uh, but he's sort of just off in the uh, the X-Men's universe. I like Colossus. I like how he's sort of um, a gentle artist uh, at heart. Uh, 
Wonder Man, says Fakey. Wonder Man. Wonder Man has some interesting stories. He also has some some bad ones. But like Wonder Man, I I used to read his comic um, in the '90s, and I and I remember that I kind of liked it. Um, and I always liked his origin as a guy that sort of almost got tricked into being a supervillain and then ultimately joined the Avengers. That's an interesting arc for a character to take. Uh, so, so Wonder Man has some good stories. He just, like, when he had that own title in the um, 90s, there was, like, this one annual, uh, and it was, like, a year where Marvel kept pushing new uh, characters in every annual. And um, his was, like, some really lame character that, like, had computer powers. Uh, I'll have to... I'll have to look it up and, and potentially do, like, a Wonder Man episode someday. Uh, it's dubstep, yeah. Uh, Chris. Evan Dorkin. Yeah, I have read um, Milk and Cheese. Uh, Evan Dorkin can be pretty funny. I haven't read his stuff in quite a while. Probably since the 90s, actually. It's probably been 20 years since I've read some Evan Dorkin, but, uh, yeah. That, that would be interesting. You know, I would love to talk about more um, indie comics. Um, and, I, and I always will. I always will. They don't get as many views, but I, I also don't care that much, like how many views things get overall. It's nice to get views. It's nice to get subscribers. But, you know, I, I'm not doing this to get rich. I'm doing this because I love talking about comics and sharing comics history. And hopefully introducing people to some new things so like something like milk and cheese would would definitely count there and i just like promoting sort of more indie stuff because less people know about it in general thanks for getting me into white russians and obscure comic stuff did I do? Did I drink White Russians in an episode? I do like White Russians. I don't drink them like all the time, but I don't. I don't remember doing that in an episode. But I definitely could have because I do like them. My drink of choice is gin and tonic. I haven't. I haven't had a drink in mo in too many of the recent episodes. But I do enjoy having a drink in the episodes. For me, that loosens me up. Um, it's not because I want to promote drinking or I feel obligated to, like, oh, this is, you know, like, drink history. No, this is about comics. I, I have a drink in some of my episodes because it loosens me up and it makes me a little more emotional. And, it may, and that sort of brings forward some passion that I always have for comics. I just become a little less self-conscious on camera and I become a little more open talking about what I love. So that's sort of why I'll have some drinks sometimes in an episode. But um, I don't want to make it feel like it's something that I do every episode because then it's sort of weird. Um, I think I'm going to leave it off here. There are still a few details that I need to do for like where the lines go on his legs and arms that I just don't know off the top of my head. I'm going to look <laughs> that up later and then throw down some colors. Um, I, I, I was planning on doing the coloring here, but I realized um, as I was doing the episode that um, I, I moved all my Prismacolor markers somewhere, and I don't know where. So I'll have to do that some other day. But that's okay. Um, I'll, I'm going to try to live stream sometime pretty soon because I have another patron uh, that is, I owe a drawing of um, the Ted Cord Blue Beetle to. So, um, so that's going to come up pretty soon. Uh, as soon as I get some free time, I'm going to uh, be live streaming again. going to try to make this a little bit more of a regular thing now that I've got a setup that apparently works. Uh, and we'll all just sort of hope for the best in getting past the, uh, the dog days of summer so that I don't always have to have the, um, the air conditioner on. Uh, I don't know exactly what that sounds like. I, I hope it's not been too, too bad. Um, but it's the only way I can work because even with it on, I'm still feeling the heat. Um, yeah. Folks, this has been wonderful chatting with all of you. Excuse me, I keep looking at the, um, the chat is in front of me, but this is the computer that has me, and then up here is yet another, and then of course I also have my phone so that I can like look things up.
Uh, it's been fun. It's been fun. I'm going to I'm gonna call it uh, here. We've been streaming for just over an hour. I think that's a pretty good amount of time. So I um, just want to say thank you all. Thank you all for joining. Uh, great questions. I'll try to uh, do this more regularly so that I've got more of a chance to see what you're asking, what you're interested in, because I, to a degree, I want to shape the show to what people are interested in. It's always going to be about things that I care about, but hopefully we'll, I'll find that overlap with what you like as well. Uh, so I'm going to take off, folks. I want you to keep reading comics. Um, yeah. Wow. Great, great group here today. Thank you so much. Take care. Bye.